This video is brought to you by DR Strings. Since 1989, DR Strings has been making handmade round core strings to satisfy the needs of some of the greatest guitar and bass players in the world. Listen and learn more at drstrings.com. Hey everybody, this is Perry with Premier Guitar. We've been shooting the Rig Rundown now for over a decade and we see some pretty wacky stuff. You guys seem to really, really love these uh, top 10 and top 5 videos, so I decided to make another one. This is part 2 of our gargantuan pedal boards. Enjoy. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, walk us through here, I guess, uh, what we got at okay. Josh's feet. Yeah, so like I said, the, the first part of the chain is a bunch of uh, GCXs, which basically it's just uh, scenes for the songs from the new album. Okay. Um, just makes it a lot easier for him to concentrate on all the things he's doing mm -hmm. if he's not having to tap dance. Uh, but we also have a bunch of pedals which you can access. We've got the Tumnus for a little drive, a little, a little lift there, uh, the Spectrum for a bit of cut, a little kind of sharp, the Firefly by JHS if he wants to be really fuzzy. Uh, a little compressor in there, the Freeze, this is the MS20 uh, mm. circuit which is kind of a nice little filter so like that. Like a filter, yeah. Uh, and then just familiar thing. Normal kind of stuff. And then as I said, you could just kick up any number of presets, one song per bank kind of thing. What's uh, number one there? Uh, now me just turn everything off. <laughs> so if he gets himself in a pickle, he could just revert to nothing. Um, and then, uh, so then I say, um, just the main pedal board is here. We've got the old WH10 uh, Ibanez Wah. That's a very particular why does, sound to it. Why um, does he like that versus, you know, a standard crybaby cry or like a um, box? It's, it's very light and very easy to articulate. Okay. It really, I mean, it's re they're really flimsy. They break a lot. So we've got stacks of them. I'm constantly kind of pirating one into another to try and make them. And he really enjoys uh, that sweep because the depth is turned all the way up to 10. Absolutely. And also uh, these have a, the, the pot has a sort of S-shaped curve to it. So it's a very particular kind of dip mm -hmm. as you uh, articulate it. So yeah, and it's, again, it's what was always used in this band. So. He's trying to stay true to the sound of yeah, the there. Y in this band, yeah. Um, as I say, uh, right at the beginning of the chain, we've got the Klon and the uh, Tone Bender, which are triggered from these two little What's pedals here. here. So that's and the uh, Tone Master. Man, that's gnarly. And the best, nice, isn't it? Best way possible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You pay a lot of money for that. <laughs> um, we've got a, a Death by Audio Interstellar for just a good chunky overdrive. Good old DS2 for wheel and bonus. And then just various other pretty straight ahead modulations. We've got a nice chorus. Uh, the EP1, AP3 is in there just for an overall uh, lift like that. And then with certain guitars, you can turn that off. Uh, the the Gretsch Fender thing, there's a lot of low into it, so it doesn't yeah. need that in there. It's just a way of equaling out the tone a little bit from so what one does he do to another. With the, I know we covered this part in the last one, but in case they haven't seen that, what, what's the difference between the DD6 and the DD3 uh, in terms the, of the, his setup? The DD6 is just kind of a nice holding cascade, so. Mm. And then this is a kind of glitchy. Ah. One of those. Uh, and then further on, we have uh, just a, a little spring from the Grail. And then a massive, great cavern on the RV5. Yeah. Which, and, which and is, I'm assuming the Grail is because there's a Grail in the rack, and the only reason yeah. that is because so you can combine it with the. Pe Absolutely. Okay. They, where, where the pedals are mirrored in the in the rack, they're generally the same settings, um, but they were just used w within the context of that certain song, and it just means he's not having to tap dance like mad. But the the kind of the scenarios presented by the pedals in the new songs are a lot more kind of one thing than another than maybe in some of the other songs so you are uh, a 12 ounce scientist i will coin 12 you 12 ounce because you use grommets <laughs> or i guess in oh, this yeah. case uh, versus i've seen him uh, uh strap locks uh nels klein and numerous other people yeah. use it but you, i've never seen him on pedals yeah well I, and i stole that idea from um whoever was looking after eagles of death metal oh um, all right yeah i, I saw so their bass player had them wedged under his volume knob and i was like I'm nicking that. Um, <laughs> so um, yeah, no, it's a great idea, and it's it's cool because you can move it if you absolutely have to, but it's really hard to move it accidentally. So understand, it's cool piece got it. That. Um, we've just got a single delete, uh, single repeat on the memory man. Uh, a short repeat, like a little slap on the DM2. Uh, 
uh, unlatched vibrato. Oh, only as long as your foot's on it. Ah. And then just a real glitchy little fella here. It's almost like random, like a bit commander of sorts. Yeah, of sort. exactly. yeah. He, he likes his bit crunching. Uh, oh, and sorry, over here. Again, we've got this line six thing, which is for, for very specific songs. There's the wobbling Danny California. Oh, yeah. Just of uh, velocity sensitive. And then uh, from Throw Away Television. And More then I occasionally just dial things up on the other buttons just to throw him off. <laughs> uh, like this one. Um, yeah, I just don't tell him. I'm just waiting for, <laughs> waiting to put it on and see what happens. <laughs> uh, yeah, oh, and sorry. And again, there's one particular song where there's, he uses the an enormous reverb, but also the hold function in the cathedral, so he can play a part and then play over it. Um, again, it's not a song they're doing right now, that spot is often used for other pedals to be swapped in and gotcha. out, depending on if there's one particular song uh, that uses an effect that he doesn't use on anything else. I'll just swap in for that set, swap it back out again. And my small Midwestern brain cannot handle this if we already covered it, but are all these pedals hitting both amps or is one getting yeah. it? Okay. Yeah. So there's, there, there's no stereo, there's gotcha. no fancy stuff like that, it's just... Uh, just everything piles through both amps, on your, like Billio. God, <laughs> and, <laughs> and are any of these pedals on? Like I know a lot of times uh, typical players might use the con almost always on. Is there any pedals that are kind of just always on? Uh, the EP stays on a okay. lot of the time actually. Um, one of the things we do find with the, uh, with the Major is because it's such a big rorty amp that it's really unpleasant for everybody if you get it loud enough to drive it that hard. So we can have a more reasonable volume but still get a little bit of push out of it because there's so much headroom with a 200 watt amp, you know. So yeah. it's just, it, it's pragmatic, most of it. <laughs> it's just getting around things. <laughs> um, what I will say is also, uh, in comparison with that, I don't know if anybody remembers, on the last uh, board, we had a big white box with these switches. Yeah. This is a slimmed down version of the same thing by uh, the guy, uh, James Murphy at Bright Onion Pedals. And these are just switching sockets. So the whole thing's, uh, each pedal has a, a pair of sockets. Mm. And if I just whip those out, that pedal's bypass, it just goes on to the next thing. And again, you've got a bypass, so if you have any problems, you could just bypass all these pedals. And Keep notice the, the glow-in-the-dark tape, too. Yeah, exactly. Well, there's, there's a lot going on up here. Uh, there's a lot of hair and eyes and sweat, yeah. and a lot of whirling around and running around like a greyhound. Uh, let's dive into this one. Sure, let's do it. Um, so your board doesn't look a ton different than the last time we talked to it. Just a, a few minor changes. Yeah, I mean, uh, on the Planet of Ice Tour, I did have this extra pedal board that came over here that was like a oh, full-on hog unit um you know with an expression pedal and the you know the hog enclosure is just so massive yeah, yeah. um and since this is the farewell tour a lot of these songs have you know these pedals have been the genesis from a lot of those songs so um i've been messing around with that new helix pedal which is awesome um and i'll use that moving forward i think just because of versa use. versatility yeah. and everything but for playing this set it was it's just you know, important to use. I'm guessing you guys are playing stuff all the way back from like highly refined pirates into the yeah, or, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Well, that's excited. I really hope to hear some songs from Omni. I love that record. Yeah, it's so so fun. Absolutely. Well, let's talk about how you get some of these noises because you're you're kind of an innovator with with this sort of sound. You know. Yeah, I mean, you know, started off wanting to you know just like cut stuff up and sample it. You know, a la you know like Fortet or Caribou or some of those you know mid 2000 kind of um, EDM kind of sounds so you want to chop and screw it up yeah. yeah you know so I mean there's uh, um, you know a lot of times I like doing the uh,
just stuff like that. You know, it was fun to mess around with. I mean, the double time and all the reverse things you can do. It's so fun. I mean, it's like, you know, endless possibilities. I mean, I just, sometimes I'm in my basement for too long and... I get that, yeah. <laughs> I think I need to get another DL4 for my board because that is so much fun. Yeah, That's no, so it's, cool. it's pretty great. I mean, and then, you know, I have a lot of gain stages going on. Normally, for the tapping, there's a lot of compression. Sure. Um, just, you know, for like the... You know, like the... Gotta help with the uh, with, keeping it all. Level. Yeah, keeping yeah. it just squished, Consistent, especially yeah. uh, when you're, you know, fretting a chord down here and playing up top. It's nice to have that sort of everything together. Squeeze it all together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Um, and then the whammy, you know, used for a few different songs. Um, it's you know just basic, you know. Um, I mean, I don't really use it too much with the, it's more of a harmonizing tool for me rather than like gotcha. a, you know, crazy Rage Against the Machine yeah. style <laughs> solo action. Or you, all the stuff that you would have been <coughs> doing with your hog, is that kind of taking the place of that? Yeah, yeah. It's just as, just easier and <coughs> a lot of the songs do have some whammy bits in it, so. I noticed um, the last time we talked, you had actually four DL4s, yep. but now you have a timeline, is that, um, what are you what are you using that for that the DL4 maybe didn't do? I just there's so many cool f different delays in here. Um, a lot of the new record was written um, delay wise with the timeline. Um, I mean the DL4 has some cool delays as well, but the stereo ambience that you can get out of the timeline is just Sick, overwhelmingly yeah. awesome. Yeah, those things are <coughs> an incredible time waster. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're so fun to play with, man. And I love the sparkly DL for the 20th, uh, 20th anniversary. I guess, yeah, yeah. That, I think they only made like 30 or 40 of them, and they were like, do you want one? And I was like, of course. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you helped them sell quite a few I, of I, I <laughs> promised myself I wouldn't put it on my board and take it on tour, and here it is on my board. I've taken it on tour. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that should kind of be on the shelf or something. Um, yeah. The loop station, are you using that just for longer Yeah, just, it, I really only use it for one song in the set. It's just, it's nice, you know, the DL4s are great, but they don't have any memory, so it's nice to be able to just, you know, have something right there, you know, switch you to a different call. preset. Yeah. Um, you know, the only th thing about it is that it doesn't re-trigger like the DL4, you know, you can't like, yeah. you know, you can't like stutter it. Like, yeah, that is a cool. So, but for feature. longer loops that are more simple, like the one I just played, it's it's perfect so the for The DL4 that. only does like, what, 14 seconds, I think, right? Yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. But also just being able to have it, have a pedal that has memory in it is That's handy, really yeah. helpful. For sure. Yeah. And then uh, what, I, this is a little tape on it, so I can't really see it. But uh, oh, this is a old. What is this? Like a DD5 or something? This uh, is for five guitar band. It's just a. And just super reverbed out tone. Um, and then you have the mini tube screamer. Jake and I both have these, and they sound. And it's dimed. I love that. Fan fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's pretty. Yeah, pretty much. It's just cranked every, and then, everywhere. Are you ever using the box of rock and the tube screamer together? The box of rock is more like a boost. Clean boost, yeah, oh, okay, yeah. Gotcha, yeah. Okay. And then sometimes I do use the fuzz for like a few songs like on Omni, like Secret Country and stuff like that, just to get the really gnarly um, fuzzed out distorted tone that, you know, the tube screamer could replicate it, but it just doesn't have the same guttural. Right. It's more like, of a distortion than it is a fuzz anyway. Right, right yeah, 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 yeah. It's a, it's a little, sometimes, this is a little too smooth, so putting this on. Get a little hair on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. Exactly. And then what about the Giga Delay? How are you using that? Um, the Giga Delay is kind of just a legacy pedal for me. I mean, I use it on quite a few songs. So familiar with it. Yeah, I mean, it's you know the main sound of Pachuca. You know the. It's just 
it's been on like so many records that there's no, there's no reason to replace it. It's you know, stay for sure. Yeah, yeah, it's it's got the the original studio tone. Okay, let's see. Let's let's talk about the pedal board. Well, the pedal board started, um, you know, as the best things do out of necessity. You sure. Know? Uh, once again, like playing uh, hundreds of shows every year, putting in so many hours. Um, you know, you find out what you need and what you don't, what you're missing. Right what you wish for um, and uh, being in the golden age of pedal design now because we really are in the golden age I mean right. things have never been better than they are now when it comes to pedals uh, you know when we were growing up in the 80s <laughs> right it was uh, there was no internet. There was very little information yeah. about pedals. There were very few pedals. Um, yeah, right. When I were, when I moved to Nashville, I didn't even have any pedals. Right. I mean, I really I didn't. Yeah, know? I had very few as well. Yeah. You know, I had like a, I had the first pedal ever I got was the Boss, uh, the you know the the red or the pink delay. What's it? The yeah, DM2. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. I had one of those. It's funny that they're so sought after now. Um, yeah, that was the first pedal I ever had. Yeah. Probably like 1984. And I had like a chorus and a couple little things, yeah. but you know, cables were weren't great then. Right. Um, powering them up, it was batteries. It was just at least for me and my very limited knowledge, it was so hard to you know to get it together um, regarding pedals. Uh, there was no way to find out that, you know what they sounded like. And this continued. It got better in the '90s certainly, yeah. but it continued that way. Um, you know, for a long time, and jump to now, we're uh, we're just in a in a truly a golden period. Oh, uh, right. As far as pedals go, there are so many people doing such high quality work. Uh, you know, uh, innovative stuff, and and we have uh, unlimited ways of finding out what they do. You know. Right. So that's why we're here. Yeah, I mean, that's why we're, this is like what all this you is. people in interweb land. Right, but it's yeah. yeah, it's important to like kind of know the evolution or the history of how yeah. you know for people like me and you when we were younger, we didn't have uh, this kind of information. <laughs> right. So I was the same. I never really used pedals at all, uh, and now I use lots of them, and I really enjoy them, and I find that if you well, if you have a foundation. Uh, in not using them, yeah, you know, learning to play really with your hands and not relying on pedals like I did for so long. Now I can, uh, I can, they can be a part of my world without dominating anything or affecting uh, my foundation as a player. So sure. it's really just, uh, uh, it's just so liberating to have all of this stuff. So this pedal board, after going through a couple years of choosing what worked for me, what I thought sounded good, uh, and believe me, a lot of things, <laughs> no, right. no, phaser, phaser, you know, <laughs> yeah. I tried like dozens of, uh, of each kind of pedal and whittled them down to what I wanted. Uh, I had a guy named Jordan Rigg, um, J Rig Pedal Boards, uh, make this for me. Uh, let's see. And I have also a Road Rage, uh, looper you know the true bypass looper cool which really helps so much on so many levels um but i will start uh well yeah what's your basic flow like sure the well the flow well i'll just go through them yeah this is a wah but it's a bass wah i actually really like the sound of bass wah on huh. guitar because it's more like a filter, envelope filter kind of thing, but you can control it. Uh, a normal wah in my, under my feet uh, just turns into a Hendrix classic rock nightmare that <laughs> nobody wants to hear. Uh, I don't do well with those. But the bass wah, uh, Dunlop bass wah, is, uh, is really great on guitar for me. Uh, and then I, so there's a few companies too, of uh, pedal builders that I gravitate towards you'll notice here um, sure. and one of them is barefoot effects yeah um, they're they, great yes they are really great uh, yep quality high quality all the way through that really works for me uh, so this pale green compressor I can't live without it it's so great sounding I just don't even know what to say it's very subtle 
Yeah, um, it seems like you have your impression fairly subtle and just kind it, of a little bit of boost. It's just in the a volume. little bit of a boost, yeah. yeah. And you know, compressors when they get too complicated for me, I I have a hard time understanding it. But yeah. this I get, and it works great. Um, this Proton is an uh, envelope filter, you know, uh, that does the quack sound. Right. Uh, I it sounds fantastic to me, and it's a small footprint, which is great. You know, because yeah. a lot of the the old uh, Mutrons and stuff, they were really big yeah and you know another thing to be said about this pedal board is that it had to be built very efficiently because a lot of times uh you know i'll have to set this thing up myself i mean we have some great guys on our crew but uh we move fast a lot of times when we play festivals uh and there's bands you know tearing on and off the stage and sometimes i'll have to do it myself and this thing had to be built uh, very solidly uh, for that purpose. Right. You know, I don't. There's there's really nothing hanging off of this board. It has to all be in one yeah. thing. Um, so the you know the footprint of these pedals is kind of important. Um, there's uh, another barefoot pedal. The Honey Beast Overdrive is kind of a little hotter drive that sounds fantastic to me. Uh, that there is a Klon uh, clone. Oh, the big white one. Right the there? big white okay. one here, yeah, that I got um, from someone in Korea on eBay. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. How is I, it? It's uh, it's the only one that I've ever heard that I've liked. I actually, <laughs> really? yeah, I, I have a, an original gold Klon that oh, I've cool. had for like 16 or 17 years yeah. that I don't have on my board anymore because I used it for so long and I always turned the knobs with my feet and uh, it still works well, but it's getting fragile. Yeah, so. and they're so expensive. They're very expensive yeah. now, yeah. Um, yeah, you know, I bought it for 300 bucks when it yeah. came out or, yeah. or in the late 90s and that was an exorbitant amount to pay yeah. for a pedal then. Now yeah. it's not, but um, yeah. that's the only one of the Klon clones I've ever heard that I uh, that resonates with me. Great yeah. sounding pedal. Um, it's cool you can A-B that to the original and actually make that Yeah, decision. and actually yeah. it doesn't really even, <laughs> funny enough, it doesn't sound that much like the original, but it does something Klon-like yeah. and has other qualities that my original doesn't. So, uh, oh, so cool. that's cool, yeah. Um, all right, another company, uh, uh, another pe pedal builders that I work with a lot, who I love their stuff, is Earthquaker Devices. Right, they're they, great. Yes, great. Kind of everything that I hear from them, I like. That terminal fuzz, uh, for me, I can't live without it. It's, in many ways, the best, most usable uh, band mix-friendly fuzz that I've ever heard. Um, there's a, it's very controllable and it can get really just raucous and nasty sounding, but there's a pleasing curve to it uh, so that it mixes well with other instruments and doesn't uh, interfere with singing and stuff like yeah. that. So uh, I love that fuzz a lot. Um, and uh, let's see here, another barefoot pedal, the Baby Pink Booster. Just a subtle boost, about the best one that I've found. Uh, yeah. That's great. And I all, uh, now I have a tremolo by uh, Chase Bliss oh, yeah. called the Gravitas. And I think Chase Bliss are a newer company. Yeah, um, yeah, they're they're great. Uh, yes, uh, the, is that get a tap on it as well? It has, yes, the the Chase Bliss pedals are really cool. I'm just getting into them. Um, very innovative. Uh, they all of their pedals have uh, tap functions, yeah. Uh, which for a tremolo, and they're analog pedals with digital brains. Right. Someone else could explain that better than me. <laughs> There's no need for me to <laughs> attempt it now. You but get the idea. Yeah. You get the idea. Yeah. And you can always, you know, uh, research it. I'm sure all of us <laughs> pedal geeks are. Yeah. But um, but the thing, the important thing about uh, Chase Bliss pedals is they sound great. Yeah. They just sound beautiful. They sound well mixed with other pedals. They sound good in your chain. That's something it's just the it's something you can only discover as you go and playing in real time with the band yeah. there's a lot of pedals that sound amazing on their own 
but when you mix them actually with a group, right? Uh, you know, they change. So it's, yeah, for me, it's the things that uh, that serve, that that pass the test when I'm standing next to a drum kit and and another guitar player, Chris, and I have keyboards to my right, and there's you know there's a PA blasting to the front of the room, and there's people in front of you, and uh, there's different uh, conditions, different things happen when you're in that environment and that's where pedals either you know prove themselves to work for me or not so yeah you know that's a cool thing about this band you know and listen to you all everybody's got their own little sonic place you know and right. you can really kind of hear everything it almost I mean it kind of gets like that Keith and Ronnie thing you know how they each had their own their place in the band it just carries it through sure well you know that brings up like the most important point about guitar playing in general, for me, electric guitar playing, for sure, is you know the two guitar playing, uh, the two guitar religion that you know ethos that is that I live by. Yeah. You know, I don't uh, playing by myself is not my favorite thing. It never was. Uh, yeah. I'm. It's all about the two guitar relationship. Yeah. The conversational two guitar. Uh, Thing happening that I that that uh, turns me on the most, right. you know. Uh, yeah, I, I grew up. The Rolling Stones are the band that inspired me to play guitar, and for them, it was always about the two guitars. It was never about one. Right. It's so, just that huge sound where one's going this way, and they're I yeah. Mean, and they're, at times, you don't know who's playing what. Yeah. And when that's happening, I don't know if those guys know who's playing what. Are they just like? <laughs> it's probably true. I mean, yes. it just fits, man. I yeah. don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's so like an instinctual thing, but that's kind of you know what I hear with you guys. You're just like find your place well and it's song serving ultimately yeah. it's yeah. not about guitar guitar no. you know it's what Chris was saying but you know it's not we're guitar players yes and uh, guitar geeks definitely yeah but mm, but it's a songwriting thing yeah. and a singing thing too right for us for me it's always been that way because I've written songs for so long so uh, you know I can solo a fair share and and certainly, you know, get into some guitar-like uh, spaces, but it's not my, f you'll never see me doing a, I don't know, it, it, the two guitar relationship yeah. is what it's all about. And you kind of, and your sound will change according to your other guitar player, right. you know? Right. So it's, I don't live on an island. I don't live on Guitar Island. Yeah. I have to live with people around me yeah. all the time. And my sound has to complement them, right? You know, and that's all of these choices: pedals, guitars, amps. It's all relational, and that's something that we can forget when we're in our when we're on our computers, looking, right? You know, and we have to do that. You know, yeah. you have to find what equipment works, and and you have to watch these videos. And I do it all day long, but. Uh, because I'm in a band that tours all the time, I, I, it always has to serve my my friends here. You yeah. Know? Uh, so yeah. anyway, getting back yeah, to that. Yeah, getting back to all Chase these options. Bliss, Chase Bliss pedals are beautiful. I right. have another pedal board being built right now that I have their Tonal Recall uh, delay and their oh, yeah. Womb Tone Phaser and their Spectre Flanger, and they all have tap functions, which I find very use, uh, useful. Um, yeah, very cool. Okay, so now we get to Cattle and Bread who are uh, good friends of mine, uh, great pedal makers, and they were the first people in this uh, last five or six years of the dawning of the golden age of pedals <laughs> that really embraced me and, uh, and helped me build my boards, yeah. you know. So their Echo Rec Delay is beautiful. I think a lot of people have these now for good reason. It's just a fantastic sounding delay. Um, I use it for a kind of wide atmospheric sound. Uh, I use it all night long. Um, I also have their Montev Montevillian delay, which they don't make anymore, sadly. Uh, it's just kind of a, <clears throat> uh, for, I just use it as a subtle delay, uh, gorgeous sounding, kind of dark, mysterious sounding delay that doesn't get in the way of um, my sound when I'm uh, playing. Uh, sure. There's the Bell Epoch delay, which I think goes after the um, 
Echo, uh, what is it, the Echoplex thing. I use it for a short delay, beautiful sounding. Uh, this is another Catlin bread pedal, the Octopussy. It's, oh, a, yeah. uh, it's an octave fuzz, kind of Octavia vibe, I guess. Uh, just sounds awesome. And I have to be a little more careful about where I use that one, because it's... Uh, yeah, this can really get away from you. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's powerful. Yeah. It's very powerful. That's where the volume knob and the, uh, the onboard um, oh, yeah. effects loop help control a pedal like that. But right. it's a great sound. Um, let's see. Uh, Catlin Brett. Well, I'm not going in order here at all. I've lost that. Oh, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't <laughs> yeah. matter. Because um, it's all kind of routed through this anyway. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right. Um, uh, another the Catlin Bread, the Topanga Reverb. Just a sweet sounding spring reverb that I leave on almost all the time, as well as this compressor. I almost never turn that off. Um, and moving back to some Earthquaker devices stuff, this is, an, uh, this is called an Arpanoid, which is this, um, uh, well, I don't think that I use this thing very intelligently, but it, uh, it does a really cool thing. Wow. Yeah, it's, oh, an wow. Ar it's an arpeggiator pedal, which I think could be used uh, more musically than I do. But That's I, I so use it, cool. What uh, is that called? It's called the Arpanoid. It's a really, wow. really cool sounding thing. Um, That's too cool. Yeah. yeah, there's no describing that. You really have Yeah, to when it. things are really loud and sometimes I put fuzz on that, it can just be a a shocking uh, kind of palate cleansing effect. <laughs> yeah. If you if you're in a jam that you can't find your way out of, just hit that, and it'll it'll yeah. kind of reboot your entire world. So, yeah. Great. Uh, Very cool. Yeah. And another um, Earthquaker uh, pedal, the Grand Orbiter Phaser. Beautiful sounding phaser. Phases are tough for me. You know, they tend to affect your signal uh, significantly. A lot of times negatively for me. Uh, the Grand Orbiter is, uh, <clears throat> along with the Chase Bliss um, Womb Tone Phaser, the, uh, those two are just very clean, uh, transparent sounding phasers. Uh, the other cool thing about this one is that you can turn it into a vibrato as well. Oh, cool. So, you know. Oh, wait, I'd probably have to. I have to turn it on, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. That's great. So that's cool. Yeah, um, great crazy tone. Yeah, um, but you know, it just does a normal uh, sounding phase as well. Yeah, that's So that's great. nice, yeah. I mean, it's hard to tell here, but in context, it's... Uh, it does the right thing. And then uh, moving to another great um, uh, group of pedal builders, Strymon. You know, everyone knows Strymon, sure. El Capistan, all their, the timeline, all their great pedals. Yeah. Um, on this board, I have the uh, Orbit Flanger, uh, which I'm sure the Strymon guys, if they see this, will just be uh, incredibly upset to see <laughs> that I've taken um, some vitamin water <laughs> bottle caps and glued them to the knob so I can make my own expression pedal. So you can kind of kick it with your feet? Yeah. That's great. All That's right. right. Uh, and also the Strymon Lex uh, is the only um, Leslie sim simulator that I've found that's uh, it's my favorite by oh, far. A let's hear it. Sure. Because that's a, it's also a tough thing to uh, wrangle, you know, right. getting the Leslie thing right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and for me... <laughs> And you can also uh, slow it down as well, so. Yeah, cool. Oh, yeah. And it kind of ramps up and right, down. Right, so being able to control the speed of the Leslie sound is, uh, is really crucial. There. Yeah, that's so. huge. And uh, finally, this switch hazel box um, is made by, uh, divided by 13, and it gives, well, there's a tuner out, so that's nice. Yeah. Um, and there's a, you can um, combine the two channels on the amp 
Uh, oh, that's cool. Yeah, or you know, just AB them. And there's oh. also a, a, a something called a lift in that box, which is a, a boost, which sounds really nice too, that I use quite a bit. So that um, is my pedal board. And Starting off from here, basically what I do is I have all, all of this is all sequenced together so that all the tones are all matched up. Okay. That means this. My signal path starts here with the sand zamp. Okay, I got one of those. You got one of those, okay. right? From the sand zamp, I loop it back around to the distortion, right? I don't have one. And now the distortion, <laughs> this, is a, this is a good distortion because I can hit all of the buttons on. Okay. Do you hear anything? You hear any hiss or no. any scream? <laughs> Do you hear any shh? No hiss. None of that. So that's full on, right? All right, all right. So now that pedal goes into that. Uh -huh. Now I hook that into a nice old Dan Electro pedal okay. where you will hear. You hear that? A lot of screeching. So that's got the screechiness in it. For that kind of vibe. Uh -huh. Out of there, we circle around, now I go into the bendy pedals. Bendy pedals, okay. Bendy pedals meaning starting with my whammy pedal, which is one of my f favorite pedals. Right. Uh, this was introduced to me by Joe Satriani. Satri. And I was doing this record okay. with a, so, <laughs> and I like man. this, I like this because I can go, I can do like, uh, like stuff like. Stuff like that. Now the whole thing about this is I get to do body movement. Uh -huh. So you know how you had those drummers uh -huh. that we all like to play with. Now there's nothing better than playing with a drummer that gives you the body movement, right? right, right, right. The shoulders and stuff. So that enables me to get a little aerobics going okay, on okay, okay. while I'm playing that. Followed by the wah wah pedal, okay. which is you know. So all of these are going like again. Voodoo my check. noisy, right. my noisy pedals yeah, here one. give me some distortion. Whammy into the wah wah, okay. right? Uh -huh. So. Now, from that point, we shift over and we go from that into a flanger. Which my good tech, Jeff, will be fixing one of these cables. Uh -huh. So you can actually see nothing better than seeing stuff in real time. And I'm quite sure all you folks watching this always see everything already nice and buttered up. But this is what happens in real time when you had a sound check. But these pedals know I will whoop their butt if they don't have this stuff ready right about now and embarrassing me in front of this camera. Anyway, so we go from that into now the envelope filters. Now, envelope and all of these are like, all of these pedals are like mainly guitar pedals. Okay. They're not, none of them except for the Sansa. And they're all discontinued. This is a great one. This is an envelope filter, okay. FX25. Yeah. It gives you... The other thing that's really good is when you want to play... When you don't want to have it, the envelope go all the way open like that. You just play it really light. You get a reggae sound. I like that. So you know what I'm saying? So now you just play light, and now you got two. You got two for one. So I like that because no other uh, envelope filter gives me that sensitivity okay. where I can go down from. I'm giving y'all all, it's not secrets, because they ain't going to do me no good when I leave here. It's just <laughs> fact of how I, how, great $25 pedal if you can get it online. They discontinued it. Now, here's the one that everybody likes. This is what, this is like when I go to a club, I ask the club owners, have you, do you need, are you guys trying to get a new PA system? <laughs> you, have you have, you have, you have, uh, you have uh, insurance? Okay. Do you want me to blow this stuff up now, later, or during the show so you can prove this pedal will blow your stuff up? This is an old synth wire. <laughs> so that's that. That's really, really good. This is scares people. And then I got a ringworm. Which one does that? You see what I'm saying? Which one does This that? is oh, Lauren Hill's one? favorite Lauren pedal. Lauren Hill pedal, okay. La Lauren Hill loves this pedal right here when I was working with her. I think I got one in gray the, like the, that. The, the, the synth watch. She can play it on any ballad. Doug, give me that. Give, what's that big pedal you got? It makes that big <laughs> no. When we're playing the ballad, I want it to sound big. <laughs> she loves that pedal. Love her. Anyway, now I got the ringworm, which is... Uh -oh. 
Now that's good. Now the thing is, that, like I said, they all go in conjunction with each other. And I'm gonna show you how that works. Okay. Another one I have is my, my little secret, secret weapon. Uh -oh. Even though it says it's a super drive, it's actually, it's an old digital delay sampler pedal. It only samples like about 800 milliseconds. And what I do with that is I drop dive bomb. Whoa. I'll do that now. So that one, I, that's how I dropped the dive bomb. So we're going to... Stuff like that. Great, great. You know what I mean? So that gives you another... Now I have somebody else to start smacking me when I want to, like, when Will's doing the double bass drum pedal, I might can get a little note in between the raindrops. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I can add to that. Billy, this is dope. Now, again, they all work in conjunction with each other. Let me show you how that goes down. Okay. I got another uh, D digital delay pedal, DD3, but I use this mainly for the hole function. And what that hole function is, you can hit a note and it holds it. <laughs> and it's all how you play it. Because the whole thing is it's just a matter of like, it's like shock and awe. So you're playing. Just kind of yeah, like yeah, tether yeah. back and forth. Now, here's the fun part. Even before I get to the next layer, which I will, I'll, I'll work my way down. Now, here's my some of my favorite pedals that are new pedals that I love. If I could have a pedal board full of all of these, I would. That's these H9s by Eventide. Okay. And these pedals are monstrously good. They have so many different sounds in it. From like uh, I could do something like. <laughs> Nice little swirly sound. Now, if I go like this, I can get like a gated reverb sound. And then that in conjunction with something with a great thing that was created eight years ago called glass. Awesome. You know, I get to do. Again, it's touch sensitive. It's just, it's just the shape of the note I'm going for, really. It's not. It's just noise, really. I don't know if, you, if they got that notation in <coughs> Berklee College of Music yet, but we'll figure it all out later on. All right. Um, now, but some of the other things that's good about this got great, great sounds. One of which is this one. You really want to freak people out? You're doing a song, doing a fin finale. Then you drop this one. When I do movie soundtracks, they like that pedal. That's the Holly, that's my Hollywood swinging pedal. I call that Hollywood swinging. Cause that's what they like for the sound effects. And, um, and so on and so forth. And I write songs like I was doing earlier. I, I like to do a little song. and so forth. Uh -huh. I don't want to get too greedy here. Now, here's the fun part. <laughs> Another thing that's good is I have a slicer pedal, which takes the sound and just gives you pulse. And you can, it just chops it up. So like when you're playing, if you, you know, like uh, you take a straight note, and you can start to get it synced up to tempo of what the drummer's doing. So for example, I could tap the tempo in here, or I can go faster. Slower, faster, so you tap tempo. Now here's where it gets fun. Now you start adding other previous, other pedals that are prior to that pedal, like the ringworm, then it, then it really comes alive. So now is when the synth mind comes into play. How do I start to match up other effects to slice it up? You know what I mean? And then make it all work quick. Because that's the key. How quick can you get in and out of something? So, so I might be doing something. Oh. 
Sometimes you can even go like this. Now I'll do it again, but I'll add the, I'll add the uh, even tie with it. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. That man. is, that's incredible. you know, and it's all coming. Fr and, you know, the whole thing is, man, never let a person tell you what you can't do. I learned it from him. I studied a lot of stuff. I'm a, I'm a Hendrix baby. All right. So I'm blessed to be next to my mentor yeah. right here. And the whole vibe of what they, in my opinion, they paved the road for don't listen to nobody telling you what you can't do. There's a lot of musical police officers out here in this music business and, they, and they'll be your best friend <laughs> telling you what not to do. No, man, we're going to play rock and roll. No, we're going to play this. You play whatever you want to do. He's living proof. And, I'm a, I'm a, and, we're all, and we all believe me. I'm not, the, I'm not the architect of this. I'm the recipient by listening. And if you listen, you can learn. And that's it. So... Um, on the other note, pretty much the other stuff that I got is another couple of H. Now, here's another cool thing. Yo, Billy, this is dope. Check this out. When there, when there, when there ain't no drummer here, now you got one. Meatbud. Dude, talking about hot, this is hot. This is my, this is my favorite joint right now because I can, I can practice without a drummer. Okay. And then you can stop it. You can change it. Now, that's just that, but check out some of the other amazing, amazing other, like metal, for example, check this out. They got it down, too. Jeff, this is right up your alley. This is my favorite pedal right now uh, for just practicing. Yeah. Anyway, you get an idea of like how much fun it is to have another a drummer there for just for your timing right. when you're practicing. Excellent to have something like that in your in your arsenal. Uh, this goes down. It goes to a, a chase tone secret preamp, which is an echoplex type preamp that I just recently got that I like. And I usually play active electronics guitars, but for this session I'm playing passive ones, so I brought that. It goes down to that, it goes to a tuner, uh, a turbo tuner, and then it goes to my favorite compressor of all, the Old World Audio 1960 compressor. I see their website's gone, that worries me. And um, <laughs> after that, it goes to the Sonus Wahoo wah pedal, uh, which does something unique among wah pedals. Let me show you. So we know how, we know how an auto wah, let's, let's hear an auto wah over here. Um, an Ottawa follows the envelope of the sound, but there's a mode of the uh, Sonus Wahoo where it follows the relative pitch of the sound. So, so if I bend a note, it um, opens the wah, and with together with a fuzz. It, um, it does something that's not, doesn't sound like anything else. And it surprises you if the guitar squeals with feedback, it opens it up. It's a great pedal. It does regular wah pedal stuff, sample and hold stuff, all the things I like. Then I've got um, uh, a love tone rubber chicken envelope that has a really nice, very vocal uh, sound I like. 
And then there's one, two, three, four, five, six distortion pedals. There's a stomp underfoot ram's head. Um, there's an EC mystical sustainer. Um, there's the mysterious uh, Montreal Assembly Your and Your, which is a very synthy sounding fuzz that's very gated. Then there's my favorite discontinued distortion pedal from Tech 21, their Comp Torsion. And it's a gated fuzz also. Uh, then from Mr. Tanabe in Japan who makes the Dumb Kudo pedals, there's a special one-off Super Dumb Kudo, which is one, two Dumb Kudos with the same set of controls in series in a housing. Um, um, and then for this gig, there is a... Uh, Vemaram Jan Ray pedal, which sort of sounds like a blackface super reverb. And then the, the new um, beloved child around here, the uh, Game Changer Audio Plasma pedal, which is a very strange pedal that you'll just have to look up online at Game Changer. Um, plasma pedal, find it, and it's a, it's a special kind of distortion through a like a, a gas-filled tube, and one of the side effects of the way it works, which is unlike any other distortion pedal, is that it um, seems like there's like a hundred gates in different frequency bandwidths, so it has a really strange way of shutting up. And if I was to put another distortion before it and an octave pedal after it, um, it makes a nice, uh, combination of things. Then there's an EBS, a Swedish octobass pedal made for bass players that sounds great with guitar. Then the Red Panda, La Panda Lab Tensor. And now we've moved away from distortion and stuff into things that manipulate the signal in strange and digital ways. And you've actually ways. told me that of, of all the pedals, the Tensor is one of the ones you would always like to have with I you. got to have a lot of design input into the Tensor, okay. Ted and folks, so it does all the things I need, like it does my... <laughs> It does my crazy Henry Kaiser momentary transposition thing. Um, Anthony, using the, the uh, whammy pedal over there, has to step on a pedal twice to change the pitch. Once to change it and again to change it back. But I just have to step on it in a momentary way. Um, so let's see, open E, B string. I mean open E, then the B on the E string. And if you add Mr. Distortion to it. Uh, you can do a lot of funny things. Um, next is the Hex Revolver DX16, which is a longer version of their DX pedal, longer memory time, and it has 17 seconds, even though they call it the DX16. Um, and let me show you, I can play a line, and I can transpose it, in this case, up an octave, and then it chops it up and plays the loop in different random orders. Um, so let's see.
So you can use it to back yourself up and it won't sound like a loop or you can use it to make a crazy solo where you can take a bathroom break or go get a sandwich <laughs> or something. Um, then there's uh, even Tide H9, which everybody knows, which I mainly use for momentary. That's a fifth momentary octave. Or if I was playing Okay, then it comes out the back of that and it goes to a kill switch from Electro Harmonics, which sends to two pedals. It sends to a TC flashback delay, which I have set for, for reverse in um, backwards mode. So if I. pedal after that so I can turn it on and off. Um, there's also um, a Montreal assembly pedal here which will speed my playing up to twice as fast as normal. So what that does is, to speed it up twice as fast, it has to play everything I play twice. So it's just something you learn to play with and learn to deal with. And there's an Ernie Ball volume pedal. And then there's a nice tremolo, the Flux Liquid Tremolo from Australia that I really like. Um, GFI Specular Tempest Reverb. 